Welcome back to Paranormal Perspective. I'm John Lorden, and as always, joining me is... Christy Arnhart. And this is the show where Christy does some research, looks into a paranormal or paranormal adjacent topic, and takes sure. me through the case. She's trying to pry me back from the edge of becoming a full-blown skeptic. And she's done a pretty good job in the past. How's it going to go today, Christy? What are we talking about? Today, we're talking about Minnie and William Winston, the Georgia Bloodhouse. Georgia Bloodhouse. I do not know yeah. this one, as usual. Um, we also put a question to our live audience, the audience that's watching us as we're recording this. Christy, what's the question we're putting to them today? Is this case supernatural? Or how would you say, or is it supernatural or... Uh, I see a hoax might not necessarily be a hoax, but let's say that. Yeah. Or, or is this faked? case supernatural or is, a hoax? Is faked better than hoax? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a little more room for that. In there. Okay. Is this supernatural or faked? Yes or no. I'm going to wait to pop the audience with that until the middle of your presentation. Please yeah. take it away and let me know when you want me to pull up the pictures because I don't, I don't know when to do that. So. Okay. Well, you can pull up the first one right now, because right. that one is just Minnie and William in their house. Okay. And now this case took place in 1987. There's no video or anything like that. So we just have some newspaper clippings and some pictures to look at to give us an idea of who they were and, you know, what the space looked like, I guess. Okay. And we're, we're talking about some people that are a little bit older. Oh, yes. Yes. They're both in their 70s. Okay. 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 Just before midnight on September 8, 1987, 77-year-old Minnie Winston, who lived at 1114 Fountain Drive in Atlanta, Georgia, was just stepping out of her bathtub when she noticed that there was something on the floor, seeping up through the floorboards. It was a reddish substance, and it wasn't there when she got into the shower. The alarm was set on the house. The doors were locked. So she couldn't figure out where exactly this had come from. So she goes, she starts walking down the hallway and there's more blood. It's on the walls. It's on the floor. It's everywhere that she can see in one size or another. No handprints. There would be quarter to half dollar sized pieces, splatters, things like that. At one point, a geyser of what looked like blood shot up from her floorboard. <laughs> But the newspaper described it as like the house's artery being nicked is what the geyser looked like to them. A newspaper, like so, a local newspaper said this? Or well, like no, paranormal it's, times? It's actually, let me, it's right here. Trulyadventure.us. Okay, okay. the one who described it that way. So she calls out to her husband, William, who is not in good health. He's always attached to a kidney dialysis machine or having to have dialysis. So he's he doesn't get around a whole lot. He was in bed asleep. She's like, get up and come here and look at this stuff. Well, they start going through their house and they find blood everywhere. And it's in odd, odd places. There's, you know, what you can see throughout the house on the walls and on the floors. There was blood under their TV tray. And that's something the TV sets on. I don't know how blood got there. But uh, it was even in a crawl space in the house that was really hard to access, and they never, ever used it. They spent all night trying to figure out what in the world had caused this in their house. I would have checked myself could... first because <laughs> I, there's been, I would have checked myself. There's been times where well, I would cut myself and I would just be oblivious to it until... I left a bunch of blood somewhere and then go, what is that? And then there's something on the wall. And then I remind, oh, look, you know, oh, it's this big Nick that's in my hand or whatever. You um, and my husband, he wasn't, he doesn't even make a sound when he hurts himself. <laughs> I just see him quickly shuffle through the house. And when I look later, there's a trail of blood. And I'm like, what has happened? <laughs> well, Minnie and William both did check themselves. Neither okay. one of them were cut bruised and his dialysis machine was working perfectly oh that's the other thing so, yeah if he's doing mm -hmm. dialysis yeah 
Okay. okay. Oh yeah, that'd be a definite indicator right there because they're dealing with blood there. Yeah. Well, after they couldn't figure out what it was that night, the next day, they called the police and homicide detective Steve Cartwright stated, I've never seen anything like this. He said it's an extremely strange situation. They brought people in and took pictures. They took samples. They checked his dialysis machine and it was in working order. None of the blood had been lost. He and his wife both have type A blood. When they tested the blood that they found in the house, it wasn't animal blood like everyone kind of assumed it would be. Mm. It was human type O blood. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. Now, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't really find hospitals or anything like that who were calling out because they had missing blood. So they couldn't figure out, you know, again, we know what it is now, but where did it come from? Right. So, this is Minnie and Williams's house. Okay. It's just a little brick house set out in Georgia. Nothing special about it. And uh, there's also a picture of them standing in the living room. This one. They're actually looking at the TV tray mm. to examine the blood underneath it because they have no idea what this is. So strange. Okay. It is. Now, they put... You know, this went into the local papers. It was on the news. Nobody was talking about it being racially motivated because this wasn't a good time in Atlanta. Okay. Um, nobody was talking about that. Nobody was missing anything. Now, let me see here. Many continued to believe that it was just not blood. She refused. She said, no, we had a hot water heater burst down there and it's rusty water. That's all it is. Well, there's a big difference between rusty water and blood, especially when it's tested from multiple places. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I don't blame her because that would be terrifying. But people have posited that it's a hoax that the daughter came into the house. She's a nurse. They say what she just stole some blood from the hospital and spread it around so that her parents would be declared incompetent. They would go to a home and she and her brother wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. Mm. Mm. I don't really think that that one holds up. <clears throat> Nobody no, was talking does... about any missing blood. Yeah, I mean, like, if you put just and... a little bit of thought into that, how would that play out? Like, they're going to test the blood. They're going to find out that it's not related to the people in the home. And that's going to open up a question that doesn't... It's not going to paint a picture where, you know, they have done something wrong or they can't take care of right. themselves or something. Unless it was a match for their blood. And, you know, she was backing it up with some story of one of them being abusive to the other or, you know, like, oh, my mother said she was going to try to kill my father. Now his blood is being found all over the place. She's obviously, you know, leaking it from his dialysis machine. Like there could have been a narrative strung together that might have helped some type of effort like that. Um, uh -huh. But in the way that this is at least being laid out so far, I'm, I'm not feeling strongly about that. I, I do think there might be something to the thought that someone else could be doing it. Uh, from outside in some way. And it's interesting that you mention, you know, racially motivated things like, mm. you know, is that someone trying to get them out of the neighborhood possibly or something like that? I, I would certainly kind of keep on the boards in terms of consideration. They would have set off the house alarm. Yeah, I was wondering about that too, though, because um, I don't know. Do people set their house alarms when they're at, at home? Well, yeah, if you're incapacitated like they are. I mean, it's one thing to have sensors, and I don't even know that they had sensors back then for movement in the rooms. Well, that's the other but thing. Yeah, what's what's a house alarm in 1987? Like a string with a couple bells on it? Like that's a whole different... I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. We never had a house alarm. Yeah. But if someone... It would have had to have been somebody who was already in the house when she turned on the alarm and locked the doors and just stayed in the house with them until they opened it back up again. And that's terrifying in itself. Yeah. But why? But there is also an effect that happens with stories. And of course, I'm going to lean back on the story I know the best, which is the Elisa Lamb case and how the mystery of that case 
literally, um, and I'm not trying to say this as a pun, but it did literally hinge on the lid of that tank because once it was discovered and it wasn't until years later when finally someone went and talked to Netflix about this, uh, or actually it might've been when I got the court documentation, if I remember right, but it wasn't until years later where the information came out that the lid was off and that just changed the whole mystery because if you yes. imagine someone falling into a tank and the lid is on, you have to assume that either they would have put it on themselves, which we know about the water levels in the tank. It wouldn't really been possible. There was nothing for her to stand on. It was too tall. So when you tell that story, if you retell it and I've, you know, watching YouTube over the years and every other person that came after me and talked about that story, they hinged on the same thing. And of, of course you would, but they did even after the information was released about the lid. Um, it just, it throws the spook factor into a different place. So I'm mm -hmm. just cautious with parts of stories like that, that kind of add to the complexity in a way where it's like, yeah, but it couldn't because of this, you know, if they didn't have sensors and there was some type of door alarm that was only on, let's say the front door and the back door, could someone have snuck in one of the bedroom windows or something like that? Maybe. You know, it's still That's possible. a good question. I know that the police hit a complete dead end. They couldn't yeah. figure it out. And I mean, so weird. Under the TV tray, in that crawl space, and it was all over the crawl space. Floor, wall, ceiling, the whole thing. Hmm. There are cases that have been documented, in po especially poltergeist cases and demonic hauntings, where blood plays a big factor. And if you look at the San Pedro haunting with Jackie Hernandez, that was blood plasma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, it happens a lot of times when you have scary paranormal activity. You'll have blood come up in odd places on people with no visible wounds, things like that. So is it that there was some supernatural event in their house? Did their daughter sneak in to try to make them look incompetent? Was it a racist neighbor? Yeah. It's so it's such a strange way to want to get rid of somebody or to scare them. This one has always stuck with me. I don't I don't get it cuz like like she said, you know, it was seeping up through the floorboards. And at one point some of it popped up through the floorboard and shot out. Yeah. But they well, checked the basement. No, it, basement's not flooded. You know, they they did all that. The pipes are fine. I can clearly you know, just from seeing this picture, seeing the age of them, like I, I have no sense at all that they were responsible for this in some way. I don't think they're capable. Yeah. I, well, I mean, they might be, that's, that could be debatable. I just, I don't think people of this age would be like, Hey, we really want to get some attention. Hey, we could do this. And people will write about it and be talking about it years later. Yeah. Like I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not getting that with this. So yeah, I'm kind of with you that there is some other outside thing that's happening here in terms of paranormal explanation. Did anything come up about like, you know, a particular person died in this location or did, did Zach Baggins well, ever go here and do an investigation and you know, like any, any of that kind of stuff around this. If you go to truly T R U L Y adventure dot us, it's under Bloodhouse. They do talk about racial tensions. They talk about uh, somebody else who had been in the house and lived there and died in a horrific accident. So there could be a haunting factor, even though they don't talk about it at any other point. That's interesting because, um, you know, I, I do talk about the fact that I like to watch Dead Files occasionally. And I swear yeah. that the investigator on that, he is always able to find some local story that kind of ties into the lore of what the psychic is experiencing in there. Um, which is actually kind of working against my argument because if someone was really trying to prop up this story and make it seem like something supernatural, it probably mm -hmm. wouldn't take much research for them to find out, oh, there was a little boy that died in a car accident one street over but he would always play in their backyard or, you know, he would, his best friend lived <laughs> yeah. there and would come and play in the basement. Like it, it'd be so easy to string together some tragedy to this, to give it a paranormal based explanation. But they tell you about it in this article, but they don't really hinge the article on it. I think it's just a possible explanation that they offer. Okay. 
Okay. Well, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. Um, some of these are it's tough. An odd one. Yeah, some of these are tough because you know you've got limited information, um, but in a lot of the cases, I can somewhat become suspicious of people that are involved in the story. Uh, you know, like when you've got little kids that are saying that they're levitating from their bed, but it's a picture of them jumping from one bed to the other. Uh, or, you've got, or you've got a guy crawling up in an attic and putting a little stupid clothesline around his neck that would not ever support his weight, but then saying that a ghost is trying to choke him. Um, I hope it never happens to you. <laughs> well, did you see the picture? Apparently it did happen to me. <laughs> and my um, husband wore that to work today. <laughs> <laughs> um... In this case, I'm not feeling any of that outside of the possibility of the family situation that you mentioned, but even that, it, that doesn't seem like a strong play for something like this. Like if she wanted to, yeah. um, you know, make it seem like her parents couldn't be living at home, like, you know, she could have broken some dishes and left them around the house or, you know, done some- Or put did, the blood around the dialysis machine, like he messes with it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Just the, the narrative that they were trying to build with that um, wasn't going the right way. We have an interesting case that has happened in terms of the vote. And that is that right now the vote is 50-50, which we did have a tie one time before, but we I think we were allowing for a small discrepancy on the percentage with that one. I don't think we've ever had yes. a pure 50-50. Um, is it 50-50 really? It's 50-50, yeah, yeah. It's 50-50 <laughs> with the voters that are watching live. So. I'm going to end it at 50 50 because quite honestly, I'm feeling the same way. Okay. I'm not in a spot where there's enough information to discount this blood mysteriously showing up. Um, is that supernatural or not? There's a possibility that there is some outside influence. We've got some things working against that. And I'm not even really including the um, alarm conversation that we had. I'm just throwing that out. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know what? No, there was no alarm. But even outside of that, um, I just, I can't push it one way or the other. And obviously the audience that is watching live can't either. Uh, what do you guys think that are watching this when it's officially released? Please tell us about it in the comments down below because I'm I'm split on this. What about you, Christy? Are well, you as split or are you just convinced that it's paranormal? Are you 50-50 or are you 100? <laughs> no, I'm 50-50 on this too because uh, there, as far as I know, nothing like this has ever happened in the house before or since. Nobody ever talked about a haunting. And it, I think William would have, even if many wouldn't have. And there's no videos or pictures that they've released that I can find. So you can't even look at that to judge. I'm 50-50 on this one, too. Yeah. It just, there's slight little weird things that happened that I'm like, why, how? Yeah. And it is interesting that despite that there's no pictures or videos, we know that the scene is looked at by law enforcement. There's comments from them. So we do have validation oh, yes. of what's found. We know that the blood is tested. So we know that there is an aspect of reality to this, which does make it more spooky, Christy. It does. Well, my hat is off to you. A tie for today. You don't have oh, to watch. My. The John wins video, and I don't have to watch the Christie wins video. We're just okay. going to call it a day here on Paranormal Perspective. But we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Please join us again as we do this next time. And until then, we'll see you on the other side. Bye.